Good afternoon. A very warm welcome to our service if you are accessing our site for the first time, or welcome back if you are returning after a short break. Andy Bate here to walk you through the information we provide for flat racing in the UK and Ireland, and the data that we have available on the spreadsheets that we produce. So without further ado, less of a view of me and more of the spreadsheets. So to start off with, let's just walk through a few basic points. So obviously in column A we have the name of the horse, um, followed by the speed figure in column B, the course on which they recorded that performance, and in the case of Vulcan Star recording a speed figure of 94 at Newmarket, he was second of nine runners, and he was beaten four lengths, and that performance was 22 days ago. Prior to that performance 22 days ago, Vulcan Star had been off the track for 238 days. The distance of the race that day was 1.25 miles, which is actually one mile and two furlongs, or a mile and a quarter. I'll explain a little bit more about why we record the race distance in that manner later in this presentation. The official going, we standardise these so you'll only ever see um, the official going as either good to firm, good, soft, heavy. You won't ever see us put out good to firm, good in places, um, because that makes the display on the spreadsheet uh, not look so good and also we can't we can't filter. Uh, the going allowance, the going allowance is uh, the correction that we produced whilst we're producing the speed figures and is a good a good point of reference for us to validate that the official going descript description for that day was uh, actually correct. So in this example you can see that we think that the good ground at Salisbury was slowing the horses down by four seconds per mile. As that moved to good to firm at Redcar it slowed the horses down by less so that was uh, going more towards zero minus three good to firm there zero at Newmarket when Falcon Star won and then other examples at the um, softer uh, end of the scale you can see that we got to minus seven for soft ground and minus 14 uh, for heavy ground. We have a course description which uh, uh, depicts the nature of the course, so whether it was straight, a straight track, it was right-handed, left-handed and then the characteristics of that course. The draw, which is the draw for that performance, so in this example uh, Vulcan Star was drawn 9 of 9 at Newmarket 22 days ago and moving on then to column N, we can see that Vulcan Star for today's race is actually drawn in stall 2. Column O, the class in the UK, it, this is the BHA class uh, classification of the race. So class 1 races are contested by horses who are in the, uh, in the upper echelons of flat racing, um, ranging down to class 6, which are the, the lower grade of horses um, that contest races. In column P, we can uh, differentiate between turf flat races and all-weather races. In column Q, we have the handicap rating. In this example, where there isn't uh, any entry in the handicap rating and it's class 1, it's likely that it's a listed race uh, and therefore subject to other conditions. Or if it's a class 4 race, it could be a maiden or it could be a race that's subject to uh, particular conditions that, uh, that differentiate across the flat the flat rating range. In column R we have the trainer for those people who just want to identify horses trained by uh, A or a group of trainers. Uh, you can easily uh, see, see that when you view the sheet for the first time. In terms of the colour coding that we put on, so we have um, a colour coding on the day since run. So we're always uh, of the opinion that when a horse is returned to the track uh, fairly quickly um, and the conditions are the same, it's more likely that uh, that performance will be reproduced. So we, we highlight the days since run, anything uh, up to and including 28 days ago in red. From 29 days to 6 months, we'll use uh, green as our highlighted colour. And anything between 6 months and the 18 months worth of data that we put out onto the sheet, we will show uh, in, in blue. 
The going allowance again is colour coded and that represents so the green is good to firm, blue would be good and then red would be soft to heavy. So again you can see instantly the different uh, types of going if you're just look, taking a quick glance of the sheet. Uh, the final um, colour reference is turf flat in green and the uh, flat or weather quite ironically is more of a sand colour. So how would we go about using the spreadsheet? Uh, we can we can take one or two approaches. Um, I think first and foremost it's it's worthwhile noting though that uh, we always look to concentrate on the horses towards the top of the speed figures because by the very nature of the fact they've recorded that speed figure it, it's highly likely that, that um, uh, they're the horses that are going to run fastest. I've kept the sample size small so we can walk through the entire field. Obviously um, the uh, bigger field handicaps will take a little bit more time than we're going to now. So the two, the two different views that we can use, um, first and foremost, let's go for a view where we are going to uh, sort the horses uh, into alphabetical order and then their speed figures from the highest to the lowest. So to achieve that I've gone to the data tab and I select my sort. So data again and sort. So when the levels, when the, the, it comes up, it comes up blank. So I'm going to add a level. I'm going to select horse and I'm going to leave that as A to Z. I'm going to add another level and I'm then going to say by speed figure. And I'm, for this selection, I'm going to have largest to smallest. So once I've selected my criteria, I then click OK. And the sheet then sorts into uh, exactly what I've asked it for. So I can see Do You Love Me only has one uh, entry on the sheet, and that was recording a speed figure of 70 in a race at Newmarket uh, 14 days ago. So from our previous view, I know that Vulcan, uh, Vulcan Star is the standard for this race, uh, recording a speed figure of 94 road of course and distance. So I'm, I'm going to take the view that Dear Love Me has got uh, um, quite a lot to find uh, in terms of performance. Uh, Goddess of Fire, the next horse down. Uh, the first thing that jumps out is that Goddess of Fire is, is one example where uh, uh, a horse is actually far better suited to all weather racing than it is to turf. So I'm going to easily pass over Goddess of Fire uh, just on the basis that uh, the faster speed figures that the horse has run have all been at uh, all weather tracks. You can see Wolverhampton, Chelmsford, Kempton, and you can see that from the uh, sand colour in column P. Uh, moving on to Man of the Night, he's obviously fairly capable because he ran. Uh, a speed figure of 84 at Newbury uh, just 15 days ago, uh, and that that was over the same over the same distance. And sticking with the uh, days since previous run, obviously he'd been off the track for some time. So I'm going to keep him in mind because it could well be that he'll improve um, on on uh, his uh, performance at Newbury a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, moving on to Thunderous. Uh, very apparent that Thunderous hasn't been on the track for a while because we haven't got any um, highlighted in red or in green. So I'd, I'd look at Thunderous and take a view. Well, um, he's only ever raced over seven furlongs, um, so there, there is every chance that um, he's going to uh, perform uh, to a higher speed rating if he benefits from the step up in class. That might not always be the case, but uh, from, from this view, obviously, uh, until proven wrong, I'm, I'm going to take the view that Thunderous is, is going to improve um, for the step up in trip. Uh, we then finally come to what we deem to be our standard of the race, which is Vulcan Star, because he has the top rating. Um, and we, can, we know that he's got his rating at Newmarket. But we can also see that he's got other performances at Newmarket where he's where he's run to a to a reasonable level. And when you consider that um, that at Newbury, uh, Man of the Night recorded a speed figure of 84. Well, Vulcan Star surpassed that a couple of times, and so was Thunderous. So, so they they would appear from um, viewing the horses' profiles that that those would be the two that um, that I'd I'd want to concentrate on. So to return the sheet to the original format that we had, I'm just going to move back into column B. I'm going to select the filter and I'm going to click largest to smallest and that will return the sheet into exactly the same order as uh, I first looked at it. 
So other things that I could uh, filter on, um, first and foremost, we can obviously pick out the courses. So we'd be looking for all races at Newmarket to see those horses that have performed best at Newmarket. Um, we have Vulcan Star three times Man of the Night. Interestingly, you can see that the speed figure that Man of the Night recorded at Newmarket wasn't anywhere near what he'd recorded um, at, at other venues. So I'd probably take note of that as I went along as well. Anytime you want to clear a description, you can select the filter that you've put on and just go clear filter from whatever the column is and it will return to the original view. As stated earlier, the um, race distance is probably worth exploring. Um, we standardise the race distance uh, to be a um, express it as a fraction of a mile. So as I said earlier, 1.25 represents uh, one mile two furlongs. Very simply, man of the night, because there is a one in there, that basically says that the race was over one mile. Moving down under a mile, we can see that Thunderous's performance at Red Car, uh, this was actually over seven furlongs. So seven furlongs is 0.88 of a mile. We then move just above the mile and we can see there are some obscure distances and these are the reasons why we express this as a number. So these are fairly standard distances but the track at Wolverhampton that produces the uh, race distance of 1.18 is one mile, one furlong and a few yards. So to allow us to filter on this column um, we uh, express this as a number so we can filter in one of two ways. We click on the filter button, it gives us a list of the distances, so we can either choose to unselect the uh, race distances that we don't want to consider. So in this case I've knocked off the 0.75 which is 6 furlongs and 0.88 which is um, uh, 7 furlongs and I'm also going to take away the 1.5 which is a mile and a half just for this example. I then click OK and you can see that it then reduces my list and it concentrates on the horses that have run in and around the distance of one and a quarter miles. The other way that I can do this is I can go in and go into number filters and I can select a range. So again, this is where it becomes uh, uh, most important that it's a number. So I'm going to select between one and one. 38, which basically is going to give me everything from a mile to a mile and three furlongs. So I'm allowing horses to uh, improve for the step up and trip, but I'm also allowing them to drop back a little bit as well. Um, I click OK, and as you can see again, it filters down the list of runners that I'm looking that I'm looking at and concentrating on. The going description um, exactly the same um, with the as with the race distance that I'm going to go in and I'm going to untick the ground conditions that I don't want to see or I want to see. So if, if like today, it's good ground, I'm going to take away the heavy and soft and I'm going to leave good, good to firm, good to soft. I'm going to leave my all-weather races there just for a minute because uh, I'll filter that as I go through. So I click OK and that now removes the extremes of going. For the course description, um, we're going to get a little bit more uh, random in our search approach here. So you can see that it's a text, uh, a string of text. So I'm going to open my box up and I'm going to uh, start to type into the uh, text filter. So I'll put in S and you can see that um, it's now taken away uh, everything that doesn't include an S. <coughs> this doesn't give me all the straight courses, but if I added a, col a comma onto the S, you can clearly see now that I've selected all of the straight courses. And this works exactly the same if I was to select left, if I wanted to have a look at all the left-hand courses. Um, so, uh, and again, for the right-handed, a similar approach with an R and a comma. If I take away the um, L and the R and the S, as I, as I showed a few seconds ago, it does narrow down on uh, everything that you type in. So if I wanted to select performances that were on undulating courses, you can see I type in UN and it filters down then onto the undulating tracks. 
All I need to do to confirm that selection is click OK and there's all the uh, undulating courses as an example. In terms of the draw, I think you, you would need to use your interpretation of what the, um, the draw 9 of 9 means to a previous performance, but what probably is more relevant is the draw today. So exactly the same as the other filters, you can use it as a number filter, so uh, greater than or less than, or in this case we'll just go and tick off 4 and 5 because we only want to look at the horses who are drawn 1, 2 and 3, and that filters the data down for you again. Uh, exactly the same with the class, so if we're looking for class droppers into, into lesser races, we could knock off the 4, 5 and 6 if, it was a, if it, that was such a race, and that would then tell us all of the horses who have run in a higher class. Exactly the same with the surface, so we can select, if we wanted to look just at the turf, we'll deselect the flat or weather, and that will remove those from the list as well. So I'm sure you get the gist as to how to use the filters and similarly they can be used for the handicap rating and for the trainer. So that gives us two ways of working through the data and um, assessing the best characteristics that a horse is likely to perform under and obviously shows us which horse or hopefully shows us which horse is likely to run faster on the day. I hope you found this informative and that you take the time to watch the other videos on the site or any future videos that we make available that will either be on, on the website or on our YouTube channel. But for now, thanks very much for listening.